Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. HTM here with an updated Stamina Nightblade build for the Blackwood chapter, but not only that, this is gonna be our easy DPS bow setup for the Nightblade class, helping you to get started with normal or veteran dungeons, or even normal trials as a damage dealer, with no trials gear required up front, and with only one skill bar needed. Now, of course, you can use both skill bars for more damage and more utility, so we've got a lot to go over. Let's jump right into it. All right, everybody, we are back on the Stamina Nightblade with an update to our easy DPS bow setup. Now for the Blackwood chapter. Uh, super easy damage setup to play and just a lot of fun. So let's jump into the stats here. And these will be with uh, Raid Dummy, so group stats. Sitting at about 15k max Magicka, 21k max health, and 34k max stamina. Got about 2400 stamina recovery, 5400 weapon damage. Uh, weapon critical does get a little bit closer to about 70% fully buffed on this setup. Of course, you got 64 points into max stamina, being a stamina nightblade. In terms of the Mundus Stone, we're going with the Shadow for the increased critical damage. It's going to be all about crit chance and crit damage on this build. The Lava Foot Soup is going to be ideal for uh, getting your stamina recovery as high as possible. And then in terms of our race on this build... I went with Khajiit, again, being the crit focus setup. The Feline Ambush passive gives you an additional 12% critical damage. So this definitely goes nice on the bow setup on the Nightblade, which also has uh, critical damage bonus passives as part of the class kit. Of course, you can make this work pretty much on anything. Not a huge difference at the top end between like Khajiit, Orc, Dark Elf, but Khajiit will be nice definitely if you want to focus on that critical damage for the setup. And then in terms of potions... Uh, you will want your weapon damage potion, as well as weapon critical, especially if you're running the uh, one bar setup. So weapon power potions all the way on this build. I think that covers the basics, so let's jump into the gear sets. Starting with our five-piece set, I'm using Swamp Raiders still on this build for the uh, Stamina Nightblade. If you're not familiar with this set, it does give you some decent two through four piece bonuses here. Weapon critical, max stamina, weapon damage. But the five piece is interesting and especially on a bow build and the stamina knife blade. This is going to add 600 weapon damage to poison and disease damage abilities, uh, which when we go through the skills in just a minute, you'll see that stamina knife blade has a large amount of disease damage abilities. And then, of course, our bow skills, many of those are poison damage based. So this is essentially going to buff every type of damage that we do, almost every type of damage we do, especially on the one bar build. So it ends up being very strong. Now, the other nice thing about this is this is an Overland set and it's from the base game. So it's very easy to get, whether you want to farm this yourself or just pick it up on Guild Traders. It's going to be super easy. Again, you don't need Trials gear to make this build work. Now, as far as the trait, Precise is going to be ideal for damage. The extra 7.2% weapon critical is a must. So make sure you get a precise bow. And then I'm just using the uh, poisons, the double damage poisons. I've got crown store poisons on right now. Uh, but these are going to be good uh, because of our damage over time focus on this build. So Swamp Raider bow for our front bar weapon. And then we'll be combining that with the Swamp Raider jewelry. So the necklace and two rings. We'll want uh, weapon damage enchants on all three of these. Bloodthirsty on the trait if you have the transmute stones. Uh, that will give you a little bit more damage than just the regular robust trait. So Swamp Raider has not changed. We're still using that on this build. Uh, what has changed is our second set decided to go with Kinra's set from the Flames of Ambition DLC. This comes from Black Drake Villa. Uh, so you will need that DLC dungeon unlocked in order to farm this weapon. But it is very powerful, you guys. One of the best sets for stamina DPS in the game that's not a Trials set. Uh, so what this does is it gives you two weapon damage bonuses, one weapon critical bonus, which is great, and then dealing damage with your light and heavy attacks grants you stacks of Burning Heart. And then when you max this out at five stacks, you get Major Berserk. So that's increasing all of your damage done by 10%. And you also give your allies within 10 meters Minor Berserk. So that increases their damage done by 5%. So great great offensive set there's also some group utility built into this so it is just fantastic to make this a little bit easier i did decide to run it on the body for the one bar just basic easy dps setup i just figured that would be easier for you to farm so like the kinra's boots bracers waist chest and the helmet 
Uh, so you can see we're actually not going to be running a monster set uh, for this patch, and I will show you why in just a second. But again, five-piece Kinra's on the body. It is a medium armor piece. Uh, divines on all your traits if you can, and then max stamina on your enchants. Of course, since we are not running a monster set, you might be wondering what we are running instead, and that is going to be the Harpooner's Waiting Kilt. This is a new mythic item coming in the Blackwood chapter, and it is quite strong uh, for DPS builds, both stamina and magicka focused. So you can see when you deal damage, direct damage grants you a stack of Hunter's Focus for up to one minute and up to 10 stacks max. Each stack is going to grant you 125 critical chance and 1% critical damage done. So at max stacks, which is 10, this ends up being probably the most powerful uh, DPS mythic in the game by far. Of course, it's extremely powerful for a one piece bonus. The downside is if you take direct damage, you do get five stacks removed. So it's very quick to uh, lose your stack. So you'll need to pay attention. Now, note that is direct damage on the tooltip, not AoE damage. So I believe if you're in a trial or something, a veteran dungeon, and you're taking AoE damage, your stack should be okay. Just watch out for that direct damage. So the nice thing is this is a medium armor piece. So it actually fares a little bit better on medium armor builds because you can run seven medium uh, with this mythic item and not lose any of those medium pieces. It also comes in the divine trait, which is awesome. And it comes with the max stamina enchant. So you don't have to transmute this. Uh, fits perfect on the stamina nightblade setup. So we've got two five piece sets. We've got a mythic item that leaves us one piece left over and that's gonna be the slime crawl one piece. You can use any one piece monster set of your choice, but I would recommend something with critical chance and slime crawl actually has slightly more crit chance than any other of the monster sets in the game. So this is what I would recommend. Of course, medium here with divines. If you can get it, that's going to be your ideal trait. So if you're keeping track, we are doing seven pieces of medium on the bow build. That's, of course, because we get more weapon damage per piece of medium armor equipped. And that is the setup. So we've got Kinra's on the body with the Swamp Raider bow and jewelry. Slime Craw is the uh, shoulder piece and the mythic waiting kilt. Now that's going to be for the one bar setup. If you want to extend this to two bars, super simple to do. All you need is a Maelstrom bow, okay? On the two bar setup, you can easily swap in volley on the back bar to get some nice bonuses from this. You're going to get increased damage over time. Uh, the main thing that you want here, no matter what bow you have, even if you don't have the Maelstrom, make sure you pick up an infused bow with the weapon damage enchant for your back bar, okay? That's going to add a lot of damage to this setup when you are using both skill bars combined. So that covers the gear. In terms of alternate gear, I will have some more options for you guys listed on the website, including options for trials gear if you're already collecting those sets or you want to get started uh, so you can know what to look out for. So make sure you check out the link in the description and the pinned comment below. But that being said, let's jump over to the skills. Starting with the one bar setup first, poison injection. Of course, that comes from the bow skill line. That's going to be our last ability. And this does poison damage, so it will get buffed by Swamp Raider. It also deals bonus execute damage the lower health your enemy is. Uh, it has a 10-second duration. Most of our dots have the 10-second uh, duration on this build, so it's pretty nice. You can just cast them one after the other. In combination with that, we have the Lightweight Beast Trap skill from Fighter's Guild. Uh, this is the only skill on the one-bar setup that doesn't do disease or poison damage, so it won't take advantage of running Swamp Raider, but it gives you an extra bonus uh, buff here called Minor Force that increases your critical damage done by another 10%. So we are just stacking crit damage on this build. So many sources, whether it's your racial passives, whether it's Beast Trap, whether it's the new uh, Mythic item, Harpooner's Waiting Kilt, or Running Shadow Mundus, uh, and even the Nightblade passives, which give you additional crit damage. Uh, that's really what this build focuses on. So you want to make sure you use a skill like this even on the one bar setup. And this is actually preferred to channeled acceleration uh, because uh, that has a cast time, right? So you don't need to delay your rotation at all if you're using lightweight beast trap. Now this morph is essential for a bow build, you guys, because most of the time we are gonna be at max range, not melee range. Uh, so you will want the ranged morph of this, which is called the lightweight beast trap. Next up, more bow abilities. And in fact, our main spammable here is lethal arrow. 
Uh, now, this does poison damage as well, so you're getting that Swamp Raider buff. And it is quite strong, especially when you factor in high uh, crit chance and all the crit damage. You're looking at easily, you know, 40, 50k uh, lethal arrows on this build. Of course, those get stronger with the Bloodthirsty trait, the lower health your enemy has. Uh, so it ends up being quite a nice spammable. And then in addition to that, more single target focus here from the Relentless Focus skill, which comes from the Assassination skill line, this actually has a stacking effect. So you need to make sure you light attack between each ability on this setup because at five stacks of light attacks, you can fire the uh, bow proc here, Assassin Scourge, dealing disease damage. And this thing hits hard with a critical uh, on this build with the buff from Swamp Raider since it is disease damage. Really big numbers on this. So make sure you use that uh, as soon as it's up. Now, we'll talk about the rotation in a minute. By the way, this does stack up more critical damage if you hold on to the proc. Now, the only time that we're going to want to hold on to the proc is when we have a stronger ability that can do more damage. And so that's going to be actually an execute range when we're going to start using our final ability, Killer's Blade. Uh, so this is actually the most damaging ability on the setup when your enemy is below 25% health. Okay, so above 25% health, you can uh, use Rel Relentless Focus whenever it's up for big burst damage, but below 25% health, Killer's Blade is gonna turn into your spammable. Uh, you can actually hold on to the proc here for even more crit damage. That's gonna make the uh, execute hit even harder. Uh, so definitely, uh, we'll talk about that in a second as far as rotation. And then Toxic Barrage as the ultimate. Uh, this is what I used previously on the build, and I still like it if you're using Swamp Raider uh, because, of course, this gets buffed by the uh, five-piece here because it is poison damage. Two dot effects, actually, a four-second dot and an eight-second dot. I think once you're fully buffed, this ends up being like 120k damage over four seconds, so it's quite a nice addition to the build, though it is channeled. Uh, so it has a channel duration, which basically means you'll want your dots applied first and then let go of this ultimate. Uh, that way everything is firing at the same time. So if that's the basic setup. I can show you what it looks like uh, if you're curious. It's very, very easy. So you're just going to start with your uh, Relentless Focus. Make sure that is up. It has a nice one minute long duration. And then making sure to light attack in between each ability on our bar. So starting with Poison Injection, Beast Trap, we're going to do three lethal arrows. And if you've been light attacking, you should have your five, a stack, your five stacks up by now. You can fire off that Assassin's Scourge bow. Uh, and that is it. That is the easy rotation. So one more time. Your dots. Three lethal arrows. And then Assassin's Scourge again. And then if your ultimate is ready, make sure to apply those dots and then just fire that off instead of your uh, lethal arrow. So that is the one bar setup. Again, very simple if you're just getting started uh, with DPS, and I would recommend that. But if you want to get more damage, then the two bar setup is not much more challenging. Uh, we're just going to move our dots, our two dots here to the back bar. In place of those, we can add some passive damage from Fighter's Guild abilities, so something like Camouflage Hunter, uh, and maybe Circle of Protection on the front bar. The abilities don't really matter. We'll talk about the passives in a, in a minute, but basically you're getting free weapon damage from having both of these on your bar. That means on the back bar, we're gonna be able to run our dots. So we have uh, poison injection here. Remember, this is the, the Maelstrom bow. So in addition to that, we also have arrow barrage. This is what's going to proc the Maelstrom bow. It's also going to proc your uh, weapon damage enchant on the back bar. So this ends up adding tons of extra damage to the build just with this skill by itself. That's why I do recommend trying out the two bar version as soon as you can. The other nice thing is this has the same duration as uh, Poison Injection and the uh, Barb Trap here, the Lightweight Trap. So these are your three dots now. You just have one extra dot. Same passives on the back bar, more um, passive weapon damage. You can also add some sustain here if you'd like from the uh, Siphoning skill line, something like Leeching Strikes for stamina sustain could be put here. Now, finally, the ultimate, the back bar ultimate is very important on the two bar setup, and I will explain. So, in cap strike from the assassination skill line. Number one, this gives us a nice passive just for some extra sustain on the back bar. We won't be on the back bar very long, but you will get some extra ticks of magicka and stamina sustain, which is not bad. 
Number two is this buffs all of our outgoing damage by 20% for six seconds. And you might be wondering, well, this is a melee ultimate, so how are you going to use this on the bow build? Well, we talked about before, once the boss is below 25% health, we are switching from Lethal Arrow to Killer's Blade as our main DPS ability. And this is a melee range ability, so you have to move into melee range. And since you're doing that, you might as well buff all of your abilities by 20% for six seconds. So when the boss is in melee range, especially in something like a trial where bosses have millions of health, uh, they're going to be in that execute range for quite a while. You'll be able to get off three, four, maybe even five in-cap strikes before the boss goes down. So you're buffing all of your execute damage by 20%. Uh, quite often that has a very high uptime. We also get an important passive from having an assassination ability on our back bar. So we'll talk about that in a second, but that is the main back bar setup. Again, it's very simple. Uh, if you want everything broken down, make sure you check out the written guide as well. I have some alternate skills listed there. Now, in terms of the uh, two bar rotation, it looks very similar. Keep up your potions and relentless. From there, you're gonna start with the back bar, very simple. So Poison Injection, Arrow Barrage, New Trap Beast, Bar Swap here, and then same thing, three to four Lethal Arrows. When you're done with that, fire off your Merciless, uh, your Relentless Focus, sorry, and then come back to the back bar. You see your dots will be wearing off just about then. Front bar, three to four of these Lethal Arrows. Swap back. Remember, once your Relentless gets low, after you hit that, rebuff it, and then bar swap back. Let's assume that the boss is in melee range. You want to apply your dots coming up to him. Close the gap right here. Ult. Uh, and then you're ready to start executing with all that nice buffed execute damage. All right, let's take a look at the passives now for the uh, Nightblade. What do you need on this stamina bow build? Well, all of these are quite good, actually. Master Assassin, you do want extra physical penetration. This will be really nice in like pickup groups or unoptimized groups. Remember, you want to be facing the enemy's back or the side at all times, if possible, especially on a Nightblade for this passive, as well as some of the champion points that we'll look at in just a minute. Executioner is very nice for clearing through trash. You get tons of sustain from this passive, so make sure you get that one. Pressure points does give you bonus critical chance uh, for having these abilities slotted. And then hemorrhage, we talked about how important this is. Increases your critical damage by 10%. Uh, you do need an assassination ability slotted, though, in order to get this. Front bar on both versions of the build is no problem because we have Relentless Focus and Killer's Blade. This is another great reason to run Incapacitating Strike on the back bar because we're going to get that 10% bonus damage on both bars. Very important. Shadow passives, we are literally using none of these abilities, uh, so we won't get much out of these. Yeah, you could save some points here if you want. Siphoning does have good passives, even though we're only using one of these potentially leeching strikes. For example, Catalyst does give you 20 ultimate whenever you drink a potion, which is quite good. That's the main one where you want to spend your points uh, for the extra ultimate there. Of course, for the bow, you will want all the bow passives. Let's talk about some of these Starting with long shots, I didn't mention this in the skill setup, but your damage does scale up the longer you are from an enemy. This includes your light attacks, uh, which do quite a bit of damage on this DPS setup as well. So you want to make sure you are at max range for your bow abilities. How do you know? Well, look at the abilities here and see when they light up. If they are grayed out, like my poison injection is grayed out right now, I am too far, so I'll need to get within about this range to make sure that ability is, is lit up. Now, keep in mind that Poison Injection is kind of the shortest range of all of your abilities, so that's what you want to check. Yeah, I can do uh, Lethal Arrow back here, but I can't do my Poison Injection. That's too far. So you'll need to find the sweet spot where all of your bow abilities can hit, which is right about here. Now, Hawkeye Passive works really good with the uh, Nightblade class as well with that Relentless Focus. Just gives us bonus damage for doing Light Attacks, which you should be doing in between each ability. So keep that in mind. Of course, Medium Armor Passives, you want all of these. Fighter's Guild is important. Uh, we did talk about the bonus weapon damage here. 
From the Slayer passive, you get some nice extra damage from that guy. Of course, you want your racial skills and then alchemy medicinal use to make your potions last as long as possible. All right, champion points for the Blackwood chapter and beyond. What do you want to invest in? Well, as far as the green tree goes, we know by now this is mostly quality of life stuff, but there are some nice things in here. I always recommend Steed's Blessing, for example, the extra movement speed. Then pop over here to Gilded Fingers for the extra gold. Work your way up. Um, Steadfast Enchantment is actually very nice. This makes your enchants last quite a bit longer. You can get Treasure Hunter for the extra quality of loot and treasure chests. Rationer for the extra food duration. And then Liquid Efficiency to give you a chance of not consuming a potion. Uh, by the way, this is kind of the ideal champion point setup. If you want a different setup for like 300, 600, 900, or 1200 CP, I will have all of those loadouts on the written guide. So check the link for more details on that if you need it. Now, in terms of blue tree, yes, some things are changing slightly. Uh, you will still start in precision, uh, jump into extended might, get piercing, you can get more offensive power through battle mastery and mighty. Now, what you might be noticing is these now have fewer stages. They have two stages now instead of four. So we are losing a bit of offensive power on this build as compared to other patches. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, what is new as well is over here, we do have Master at Arms, which is back for the Blackwood chapter. This ends up being quite strong uh, on this build for direct damage. That's going to buff all of our main spammables, uh, even for like trash pulls. If you want to put Bombard or something, some AoE damage on your front bar, that will buff that as well. Now, in addition to Master at Arms, we're going to put in Thaumaturge. You saw we have tons of dot damage on this build. So Thaumaturge ends up increasing pretty much all of our abilities by another 10%. And then finally, uh, Fighting Finesse for the bonus critical damage. And then Backstabber for increased crit damage while flanking. We talked about that earlier with the Nightblade passives. Especially on a bow build, it's important to get uh, behind or to the side of an enemy. So those are our four slotted stars. And then if you have anything else extra, uh, Tireless Discipline for more max stamina. You can even come into here, uh, pick up some defensive passives, things like Quick Recovery and definitely preparation I would recommend for the bonus damage reduction. 10% damage reduction there is nice. Now, finally, in terms of the red tree, pretty typical uh, where we would usually start. Rejuvenation for the extra recovery is good. Uh, ironclad for the extra armor. Boundless vitality for the extra health. I would usually start with these three. And if you have any more beyond that, you can start working, working up through your passives. Sprinter, Hasty, Hero's Vigor for even more health. And then your last slotted star that I would re uh, recommend, definitely Bloody Renewal for the extra stamina sustain. Uh, and then you can get even more passives if you have more CP than that, Tumbling and Defiance. So again, check out the written guide if you want to see the 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP versions of that for this build. But that just brings us to the uh, outfit style if you're curious about what this character looks like. If you want to see the styles that I'm using, um, actually, most of it is just the ba the base armor style from these sets. So Kinra's set, I actually like how this looks. It looks really good on the uh, Khajiit, I think. So I didn't change these styles at all. And then Harpooner's Waiting Kilt is literally a kilt. That's what it looks like. So that's what you should expect once you get that mythic item. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up our easy Stamina Nightblade Bow DPS setup, now updated for Blackwood Chapter and beyond. Remember, this is just for getting started as a damage dealer with a combination of overland and dungeon sets that are pretty easy to farm and a rotation that's basically as simple as I could make it. So hopefully you found this helpful. Again, if you have any questions on the build or you'd like to see other options to extend it further, check out the written guide. There is a link in the description as well as the pinned comment down below. Lots of alternate gear sets there, champion point loadouts, skill options, basically everything you need is there. Now, if you like this video as opposed to my usual content on ESO, make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure you crush that like button to let me know. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future builds or content for the Elder Scrolls Online. If you'd like to support the channel further, there are links down below to my social media as well as the website. Check those out. We also have a pretty unique membership program right here on YouTube where members get additional perks, things like early access to videos or members only builds and guides that you won't see anywhere else. If that sounds interesting to you, just click on that join button for more information. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there. and. I I will see you around in the next video.
Thank you.